What's up everyone? So, I did extremely well in the Digimon Coliseum 5k event. And without further ado, I'm going to present to y'all deck tech for what I played. I played a simple red-yellow control, more focused on yellow than anything else. And let's go ahead and go through with it, starting with the digi eggs. So, Cupimon here added a lot of card draw to the deck and was definitely needed at 4. Um, a lot of times I found myself swinging in with no gain just to draw off the Cupimon, even attacking in knowing I would get blocked. Upamon is there for those few instances late game for you to draw. Uh, best case scenario, you get to exactly three memory and get to go, I mean, not three memory, three security, and get to go with this Salmon here over the Upa. Now, this is the recovery Salmon. It is essential to helping you maintain. Um, but really, I just used it for early aggression, pushing, getting myself into that game-winning scenario uh, as soon as possible. Same with the Patamon. I think I only used Patamon's recovery once in the whole tournament. And I probably used Salomon's recovery two or three times. Most of the time, they swung early and died before either of their effects would matter. This is the promo Patamon that on play, if you have one or fewer security, you recover one. Um, ideally, the best way to trigger him is going to be off of this Magnadramon. But if you hard play him for the four and get the recovery, that's awesome. Lucemon, I felt three of of him was the best place for him to be at um loved it very i can only think of one instance in the whole tournament that i paid full cost for him most of the time it was five or three drop off of the magna Dramon. every time he came out he did his recovery and then got to just start pushing aggression so Magna Angemon here was one of the few cards that I wouldn't swing into security with. I only swung in when I was trying to set up game for the next turn. Usually I held him back to recover after he did his recovery so that I could set up for going into Megas. Um, Mistymon here was generally my play a lot of times. Uh, come out, clear two rookies, and be ready to go into a Mega the next turn. Uh, I played two of on the Seraphimon, uh, just to get that little bit of extra recovery. I felt that extra recovery was nice and gave me that extra cushion that I needed. The security attack plus one, while good, didn't come up too often. Because uh, generally, when I had an instance where I did have security attack plus one, Usually his lower DP made me not want to swing with him into security. A lot of times he ended up being what I would digivolve into the Valder arm. Magnadramon was always going after security. Um, I didn't care if Magnadramon died because you, if I was swinging with Magnadramon, I had a rookie I was playing for free. And nine times out of ten, that rookie was Lucemon. So Magnadramon... Just insane amount of push coming from that. Kintorsmon led to some amazing combo setups. Um, there were a number of times that I did evolved into Kintorsmon, swinged into another 11,000 DP Digimon for both of us to die, just so I could trigger his on deletion to delete another Digimon. And my personal favorite instance of the whole tournament was going in against um, a blue Omni deck, swinging into security with Kintorsmon, where he is just stalled out with a Metal Gururumon, unable to swing because he can't lose his target for Omni, he's just waiting for Omni. Having Kintorsmon die to Omnimon in security and then getting to clear out the Metal Gururumon for free. This card is amazing in this meta. Trades with uh, War Grey and swings over 
other Magnadramons, you'll see a lot of them. Like, and that minus 11,000, like, I always plus one off this guy. Now, Balder Arm, once you got Balder Arm out, there was no reason to hold back from security if you were holding back. You pushed and you pushed hard. This is the card that finished games. Comes out, usually I was killing two things, occasionally just one. And just went for the push. Gaia Force doesn't need much explanation. It's going to come in to play to kill something. I use this to kill anything with a 12k or higher body. Uh, love seeing in security. The only time I had a really just kind of like, oh, moment with Gaia Force was playing against Yellow Mastemon in the final round and Mastemon discarding the one Gaia Force that was in security. I knew it was the only one in there because I just played a TK. And knowing that my chances of winning that match just kind of evaporated with that card going. Eden's Javelin was really good. I got to points that with the amount of just card draw in this deck or just stalling out um, where you didn't play a card on your turn. Where I was doing Eden's for minus 12,000 DP and killing Megas with Eden's Javelin, just a single copy. Seven Heavens was more of a hope to be in security. Very rarely did I hard cast it. When I did hard cast it, it was almost always to delete an ultimate. And most of my hard cast of Seven Heavens was against Imperial Dramon decks to take out Pale Dramon or Dino Beamon. Three Taikamiya was really good. I found myself playing instances of this from the hand not to be able to trigger Gaia Force but so that my Megas could swing over other Megas. And finally, TK. So most people are playing this deck with 2 TK, 2 Blade of the True. I chose 4 TK because I didn't think the draw power from Blade of the True was going to help that much. Nowhere near as much as what constantly controlling the security would be. Um, this car was invaluable. I only had it backfire once. I was down to three security. Opponent swung, hit TK, and the other two security were Volder Arm. Both of them. And I lost that game because of it, but the odds of that happening are so little. As you can see here, most of this deck is yellow. You only are playing 11 cards out of 50 that are not yellow. So I wouldn't fear that. Now, changes to this deck. I liked it for what I went up against as it was. The only card I really wanted to get in here was I really wanted to put in two Trident Arms to help get the Tamers out quicker. But I could not find any room for it. Nothing in here did I want to come off of copies of. So, if you can work it into your build and don't feel like you're losing something essential by doing so, awesome. If not, the deck plays wonderful how it is. Um, I went into this tournament expecting to face a lot of yellow war gray decks, a lot of uh, green OTK, and purple toolbox um i wasn't too worried about imperial i didn't know how the deck would fare against imperial but i felt it would do well and the few imperial decks that i did go against it did do very well uh blue omni was a frightening matchup for me that was not easy to win i did win a a uh red against a red uh ragna zoo deck um that was not an easy matchup and mega zoo in general is a very bad matchup for this deck regardless of what version um but yeah this was the deck 
came second place overall, uh, with the only loss being to Yellow Mass Day at the end. Um, most of my opponents I won 2-0 against. I did lose singular games to uh, Blue Omni, uh, Shine Gray, and then obviously lost two games to Yellow Mass Day, but I did win one of the two out, one of the three out of the match. Um, but for this meta, you cannot just sit back and not attack. Like, this deck needs to be aggressive to fit into the meta. And that's part of what led me to doing so well in the tournament. If I would have played this deck the way I've seen multiple people in the past play, where they just want to sit back, let the deck try to play itself, you will not win in this meta. Like, you can have amazing security and you will still lose. You have to push aggression with this meta. And finally, I want to get a huge shout out to the people who actually made the tournament successful. You had Max Tepper and Joe Dobby uh, streaming the event and they did a wonderful job. And then you had Aquafi running the tournament, and he did an amazing job running this tournament. So, shout outs as well to all the players that made the event so great. We had a lot of good players in the player base, and a lot of just very good personalities. Um, so, it was a great tournament, great turnout. Uh, hope you've enjoyed. Hope you like the deck. Choose to try it for yourself. Any suggestions of your own, leave them in the comments down below. And thanks for checking us out.